Here's a dessert for my Spring Detox Menu Series, RWOP Season 2, Week 4. Oh, hi everyone. Hi, it's Sandy, Norman, Oklahoma. I'm just sitting out back here looking around the yard trying to get inspiration for Dessert Week using Philadelphia cream cheese. Now, keeping in line with my four-part spring detox menu series, I'm trying to think what I could possibly find out here that would actually make a good detox ingredient in this wonderful dessert that I plan on making. Not quite sure what I'll come up with that would be appropriate to use some kind of detox plant in. But I think if I go poke around in the yard a little bit, maybe I can come up with a good idea. So, I've got my basket. I'm ready to go see what I can find. Okay, I know I can find some around here in my own yard while it's still young and tender. And, ah, I think I've poked around long enough to find exactly what will work in a dessert. Come with me, we'll go pick some. Poke. You can cut and use the greens when they're young, before they bloom. I found some more poke. This one will be perfect. Let's go make a dessert. And besides the poke, I'm going to be adding a few other little cleansing ingredients to this dessert today. I'll show you a couple of them. First of all, honey, I wanted just to remind you that if you can possibly buy your honey from local beekeepers, this will help boost your immunity to allergies. And this particular beekeeper had another product I'm going to use. That would be bee pollen. And I'll tell you about some of the health benefits of bee pollen in a little bit. And to go along with that poke and honey and honey pollen, the star of the show, drum roll please, Philadelphia cream cheese, the regular. You can use low fat if you want. And Philadelphia cream cheese with pineapple. And together, these are going to make the most wonderful dessert you've ever tasted. Yes, with poke and honeys and bee pollen. But first, before I get started cooking, let me tell you a few little fun facts about pokeweed. The reason that I picked poke, <laughs> uh, sorry about that, pun. it has some toxic aspects to it. So you really have to be careful when using poke. Yes. It's in the springtime and the shoots are just young and tender. And to cook the poke, you must boil it two and even three times, changing the water in between. Never eat the berries. Berries were used by the Native Americans as a dye. It's, it's a purple berry and they would use it as a dye on their horses probably on themselves, and to decorate things. Their tea now, it gives me an idea about that dye. Maybe it could touch up the roots. <laughs> Pioneer women would bake those berries right into their pies because of its amazing properties to heal rheumatism. And I don't think that using the berries is a good idea. If you want to ingest poke at all, I seriously hope that you would Google it. <laughs> I love saying Google it. The roots have been used to heal skin diseases like eczema and psoriasis. That a possible cure for childhood leukemia is found in the common pokeweed. It's used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, tonsillitis, mumps, glandular fever. So those are just some of the benefits of poke. Please, before trying these greens, be sure to look it up. 
have photos of it, you need to know or take someone with you the first time you look for poke that knows exactly what it looks like. Now, about bee pollen. One thing about bee pollen, if you are allergic to bees, don't, don't ingest bee pollen. Now, some of its benefits are related to slowing down the aging process and it helps with losing weight. It improves your metabolism, dissolving and flushing fat cells from your body. And it also helps reduce food cravings. And it helps men with prostate problems. And the list goes on and on and on. So Google that too. Now, you probably wonder exactly what it is that I'm going to make this time. And I've put some thought into it and what I've come up with, Easter is this coming weekend. When I think of Easter, I think of Easter bunnies. When I think of Easter bunnies, I think of carrots. When I think of carrots and desserts, I think of carrot cake. And that will be the perfect place to put the poke into the carrot cake batter. It's like these people that come out with the cookbooks of how to get, feed your kids more vegetables. Hide them. <laughs> Hide them in your food. So, I think this will be fun. And cream cheese will be, of course, with a reconstructed cream cheese frost. They're going to be fun. They're going to be healthful. They're going to be beautiful. And they're going to taste yummy. And so, here's our little basket of Easter treats. My pokey pineapple carrot cupcakes with honey pineapple cream cheese frosting. There's only one thing left to do, and that's take a taste test. So I'm just going to take a little bite right out of the cupcake wrapper. Looks beautiful. Ah, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. There are other cleansing agents in these cupcakes. There's pineapple, there's lemon zest, and of course the goodness of we have carrots. cons and golden raisins. So there's plenty of fruit and veggies. Try these. I guarantee you're going to love them. So will your kids. So that's my dessert for week number four using Philadelphia cream cheese regular and Philadelphia pineapple cream cheese. A whole eight ounces of this, half in the batter and half in the frosting, and four ounces of the regular. I think we need to take two. Mm. I think we need to do one more take. Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. Oh. These are out of this world. Mmm. Pineapple and honey cream cheese frosting. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Just give me a spoon. Oh, and did I mention pineapple cream cheese in the batter? Mmm. Let me see if I taste it. Mmm. 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 Oh. Now I better check and see if I can taste them both together at the same time. The pineapple cream cheese and regular cream cheese in the frosting and in the batter. I think I now have a really good idea about all the flavors in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gone. See you next time, everybody. Bon appetit. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.